This is section 1-4 on rates of change, tangent lines, and sensitivity. We encounter average rates of change in such forms as average velocity in miles per hour, growth rates of population in percent per year, and average monthly rainfall in inches per month. The average rate of change of a quantity over a period of time is the amount of change divided by the time it takes. In general, the average rate of change of a function over an interval is the amount of change divided by the length of the interval. In other words, like miles per hour or feet per second. Find the average rate of change of f of x equals x to the third minus x over the interval 1 to 3. So we need f of 3 minus f of 1 over 3 minus 1. And that's 9 minus 3 minus 1 minus 1 over 2. So that's 6 over 2, 3. Experimental biologists often want to know the rates at which populations grow under controlled laboratory conditions. Figure 1.27 shows how the number of fruit flies grew in a controlled 50-day experiment. The graph was made by counting flies at regular intervals, plotting a point for each count, and drawing a smooth curve through the plotted points. Use the, point Use the points P23150 and Q45340 in figure 1.27 to compute the average rate of change and the slope of the secant line PQ. Well, that, that's asking the same thing. So the slope of the secant line and the average rate of change, that's the same thing. Uh, so we have uh, 340 minus 150 over 45 minus 23. That's going to be uh, 90 divided by 22. So 4.090, 4, 4 4.090, and that's going to be uh, flies per day, flies per day. All right, tangent lines, let's estimate the rate of flies per day at exactly 23 days. Find the slope of the secant line to point P. So we're going to find the slope of the secant line starting to point P. And let's go to this point Q, which is 45, 340. And we find out that the slope of that secant line is 8.6. Well, now keep in mind that we're going 23, 150. And so to find the slope of this secant line is 330 minus 150. And we'll divide by, oh, what is that going to be? 20, no, 17. Divide by 17. And we'll say it's 10.58. So 10.588, let's say. Well, now we can get a little bit closer to this point and get a little closer and call that point um, 35, 310. So now we're going to take 310 minus 150, and we're going to divide by, oh, 23 to 35 is 12. So we'll divide by 12, and let's say that we, uh, we have the slope of 13 and a third, so 13.333. So that slope's 13. Now we're working our way towards getting the slope of the tangent line right there. And let's go with just this last one. And we have 265 minus 150. And we're going to divide by uh, 17, no, 7, 7. Is it going to be 35, 30? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so uh, 16.428, 16.428. And really what we're doing is we're working our way towards you know, using secant line to estimate the slope of the tangent line. And we did this exact same process with instantaneous velocity. So finding the slope of the tangent line and instantaneous velocity is doing the exact same thing. Find the slope of the parabola y equals x squared at the point P24. <coughs> Write an equation for the tangent to the parabola at this point. So we have a parabola and we got this point 2, 4. Let's call that 2, 4. And find the slope of the parabola. In other words, find the slope of the tangent line. We have limit as h approaches 0 of f of 2 plus h minus f of 2 over h. And again, finding instantaneous velocity is the same thing as asking what is the slope of the parabola, or what's the slope of the tangent line, uh, when x is 2. We have the limit as h approaches 0 of 2 plus h squared minus f of 2 is 4 over h. 
Limit is h approaches 0, 4 plus 4h plus h squared minus 4 over h. The 4s cancel out. We have limit as h approaches 0, 4h plus h squared over h. That's limit as h approaches 0 of 4 plus h. And uh, you can see, hear the bell in the background. And then uh, that's going to be 4. It has a slope of 4 well, when x is um, 2. Definition, slope of a curve at a point. The slope of the curve, y equals f of x at a point p, a, f of a, is the number. This is the slope of the tangent line. And this is actually the first question on the derivative gateway quiz. What is, give the formal definition of a slope of a tangent line. Exploring slope and tangent. Oh, wait, wait I didn't finish this problem back here. Because it said... Write an equation for the tangent to the parabola at this point. So y minus 4 minus 4 is equal to 2 times x minus 2. There's the equation of the tangent line. A, find the slope of the curve at x equals a. We have limit as h approaches 0 of 1 over at a. a plus h minus f of a is 1 over a all over h. Limit as h approaches 0 of, uh, let's see, if I multiply everything by a and a plus h, the a plus h's will cancel, and we get a. Then the a's will cancel, and we get a plus h. All over, this all kind of stays, a h and a plus h. Now we have the limit as h approaches 0 of negative h over a h a plus h. Now we have the limit as h approaches 0 of negative 1 over a times a plus h. And now we can actually plug in 0 into this, and we get negative 1 over a squared. So find the slope of the curve at a. Well, if we have a value, let's say we wanted the slope of the curve at negative 1 fourth, now for part b, all we got to do is plug negative 1 fourth in for this. So negative 1 over negative 1 fourth squared. And that's going to be negative 1 over 1 16th. That's going to be negative 16. What happens to the tangent of the curve at the point a 1 over a for different values? Of a? Ah, don't, I'm not worried about that question. Normal to the curve. The normal line to the curve at a point is the line perpendicular to the tangent at that point. So the normal line is perpendicular to the tangent line. Write an equation for the normal to the curve f of x equals 4 minus x squared at x equals 1. So we have the limit as h approaches 0 of 4 minus 1 plus h squared. There's 1 plus h minus 4 minus 1 squared is 1. Well, 1 squared is 1 over h. Limit as h approaches 0 of 4 minus 1 plus 2h plus h squared minus 3. <coughs> Jeez. Over h. Limit as h approaches 0 of 4 minus 1 minus 3. That's gone. So we end up with negative 2h minus h squared over h. And that's the limit as h approaches 0 of negative 2 minus h. So the slope of the tangent line is negative 2. So the slope of the normal line is positive one-half. Positive one-half because, you know, it's opposite reciprocal. So tangent lines have opposite reciprocal slopes. Now we're going through the same point. The point is 1, the point is 1, 3. So y minus 3 is equal to 1 half times x minus 1, and that's the equation of the normal line. Velocity revisited. The function y equals 16t squared that gave the distance fallen by the rock in example 1, section 1-1, one, one, was the rock's position function. A body's average velocity along a coordinate axis, here the y-axis for a given period of time, is the average rate of change of its position y equals f of t. Its instantaneous velocity at any time t is the instantaneous rate of change of the position with respect to time at time t, or here is the, def the formal definition of derivative it's also how you find instantaneous velocity. Find the instantaneous rate of change. 
for the function at t equals 2, interpret the answer if f of t represents a position function in feet of an object at time t seconds. We have the limit as h approaches 0 of 2 times 2 plus h squared minus 1 minus 2 times 2 squared is 4 minus 1 all over h. Limit as h approaches 0 of 2 times 4 plus 4h plus h squared minus 1 minus, uh, what, 7? Yes, yeah, 7. All over h. Limit as h approaches 0 of 8 plus 8h plus 2h squared minus 8 all over h. And the 8s cancel. Limit as h approaches 0 of 8h plus 2h squared over h. And that's limit as h approaches 0 of 8 plus 2h. Now when we plug in 0, we get 8 feet per second. In exercise 1 through 6, find the average rate of change of the function over each interval. Find the average. Okay, so we go uh, f of 2 minus f of 0 over 2 minus 0. Uh, 8 plus 1 squared of 9 minus. We plug in 0, we get square root of 1 over 2. So uh, 3 minus 1 is 2 over 2. That's 1. At the indicated point, find the slope of the curve. All right, we're looking at number 10 all the way down here. Maybe I can put that work up here. We have, uh, let me erase that. The limit as h approaches 0 of 1 plus h squared minus 4 times 1 plus h minus, if I plug 1 into that, I get 1 minus 4. So minus minus a negative 3, so really plus 3 over h. Limit as h approaches 0 of 1 plus 2h plus h squared minus 4 minus 4h plus 3 all over h. Limit as h approaches 0, well that will be 1, negative 3 plus 3 is gone and 2h minus 4h is negative 2h plus h squared over h. And now we're going to factor out an h and cancel. So you get negative 2 plus h. So negative 2 is the slope of the curve at x equals 1. b, an equation of the tangent line. Well, the point is 1, negative 3. So we have y plus 3 is equal to negative 2 times x minus 1. Let us see an equation for the normal would be y plus 3 equals 1 half times x minus 1. Then draw a graph of the curve, tangent line, normal line in the same square viewing window. Now let's do that. So we got y equals, let's, can we turn, is it working? Why is, there we go, now it's working. Clear, y equals, let's clear this. We got x squared minus 4x. And then, um, Let's do this. We're going to go negative 2 times x minus 1, and we'll just minus that 3 over. That's the tangent line, and this is the normal line. 1 half times x minus 1, and then minus 3. Zoom 6. So here's the parabola coming. There it is. There's the tangent line, and here is the normal line. In exercise 13 and 14, find the slope of the curve at the indicated point. Here f of x is equal to absolute value of x minus 2, and we want to know the slope of the curve at x equals 1 and the slope of the curve at x equals 3. Well, if we look at the definition of absolute value, we do the opposite of x when x is negative, and we do the same if we leave it the same if x is greater than or equal to 0. Now, the v when you graph absolute value, absolute value of x happens at zero. So in other words, if you're on the left side of the, 
of the v there, uh, you're going to take the opposite of the of the equation. If uh, you're on the right side, you're just going to leave it alone. Well, if we look at absolute value of x minus 2, we would use this. Here, we'll use this. Now, let's graph it. Let's sketch it. Over here at 2, here is the v. So, for this function, we want negative x plus 2 when x is less than 2. And we'll just do x minus 2 when x is greater than or equal to 2. So if we do x equals 1, that's less than 2. So we're actually using this equation right here. Limit as h approaches 0 of um, negative 1 plus h plus 2 minus, we plug 1 in, negative 1 plus 2, all over h. Limit as h approaches 0 of, let's see, negative 1 plus 2 minus 1, uh, that's 0. So we have, well, let's do this. Negative, negative 1 minus h plus 2 minus 1, all over h. Limit as h approaches 0 of... Negative 1 and 2 is 1, minus 1 is 0, so negative h over h. The slope is uh, negative 1. And we can see that right here. The slope is negative 1. For x equal to 3, we're going to use x minus 2. Limit as h approaches 0 of 3 plus h minus 2. Minus, when we plug 3 in, we get 1. 3 minus 2 is 1 all over h. Limit as h approaches 0. Uh, 3 minus 2 minus 1 is 0. h over h. Slope is 1. We can see that. The slope is 1 here. Determine whether the curve has a tangent at the indicated point. If it does, give it slope. If not, explain why not. Well, first of all, in order, in order to have a slope at a point, especially piecewise, the point has to be the same for both of these. It has to be a continuous function at this point. So if we plug 0 in, we get 2. And if we plug 0 in, we also get 2. Now, if those aren't the same, the answer is no. We don't have a tangent line there. So let's do the top piece. We have the limit as h approaches 0 of 2 minus um, 0 plus h, 2 times 0 plus h minus 0 plus h squared, and we're going to subtract. Now, when we plug 0, f of 0, because we're minusing f of 0 is actually here. So minus 2, we got to plug it into here when we do f of 0, because we're going to do f of 0 plus h minus f of 0 over h. And the f of 0 is actually down here, even though we're doing this one right here. All over h. Limit h approaches 0 of 2 minus, actually, don't that go away. That'll cancel out with that one. So we get negative 2h minus h squared over h. We can factor out an h. Limit as h approaches 0 of negative 2 minus h. And so the slope is negative 2 for the top one. How about the bottom one? Limit as h approaches 0 of 2 times 0 plus h plus 2 minus f of 0 is 2 over h. So the limit as h approaches 0 of uh, 2h over h is 2. But does, uh, does determine whether the curve has a tangent at the indicated point? No, the slopes are not the same, so it doesn't have a tangent line there. If not, why not? The two slopes are not the same. Find the slope of the curve at x equals a. We have the limit as h approaches 0 of 2 over a plus h minus 2 over a over h. Limit as h approaches 0. We're going to multiply by a and a plus h. Yeah, all three of those. So the a plus h is cancel. We get 2a. The a's cancel. We get minus 2 times a plus h. And then in the denominator, 
we get AH times A plus H. Limit as H approaches 0 of 2A minus 2A minus 2H over AH times A plus H. Well, these cancel. We have limit as H approaches 0 of negative 2H over AH times A plus H. Those cancel. And now we can plug 2 in. We get negative 2 over uh, A squared. Locate each discontinuity, the type, and justify each. So the first one's removable at negative 6. Negative 6, removable, and we can say the limit as uh, x approaches negative 6 of f of x is up here at 3, but f of 3 does not exist. At 2, we have a jump discontinuity. Uh, limit as x approaches uh, 2 from approaches 2 from the left of f of x does not equal the limit as x approaches 2 from the right of f of x. And then 6, we have infinite. I should say x equals, x equals, x equals infinite, and the limit as x approaches 6 from the left of f of x is infinity.